Hello. In this video, we're going to describe how to take energy bills and put them onto a spreadsheet and then use that spreadsheet as an analysis. Now, I'm famous for trying to go on diets to lose weight. And what's the first thing you do when you go on a diet? Aside from craving food, I get on a scale. And why does one get on a scale when you start a diet? Because you want to be able to compare. Similarly with energy, if we're interested in being more efficient, if we're interested in putting renewable energy on a building, the first thing we need to know is how much energy do we use? How much energy do we need? Are those two numbers near the same? And then, of course, how can we supply that energy? But again, the first thing we need to do is to figure out, to quantify, how much energy do we use? And the easiest way to do that, the best way to do that on a house, is to use a spreadsheet. So this is Excel and open up Excel and get a blank sheet and I've put a little bit of numbers in there but let's start by backing up and putting in a headline here. So I'm gonna merge and center and I'm going to say uh, energy uh, bills B-I-L-L-S for Wes's house. This is a bit embarrassing because I'm not the most efficient user of energy in the world. But So, here we have the information you're going to get from an electric bill, right? You're going to have the month, the days in the billing cycle, I'm just going to format this cell here so that it wraps the text so that it just is a little easier to see. Then I'm going to center that and I'm going to center this kilowatt hours. That's the measure of how much electricity we used in this case over the course of a month. And here we have and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Average kilowatt hours per day. But this uh, that's not information. That's information we're going to get after we get enter that billing stuff. So I put June of this year on here. And then in the cycle there were 29 days and 650 kilowatt hours and a hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty eight cents was the cost then over here I've looked at the average kilowatt hours a day what I did was I took C6 let's redo this if you're new to spreadsheets let's back up and start from the beginning a spreadsheet each of these little boxes here is called a cell. And these cells are identified by the number and letter. So right here you can see these are sort of this, what is this, uh, sort of pink, well, yellow color, whatever it is. I'm colorblind, so who knows. Anyway, you can see that that's A1. If I get down here and look at this, we can see that this cell is named E. 22. So the rows go by number and the columns go by letter. And that's important because later we'll be using that. Later is in right now. So suppose I want to know what was the average number of kilowatt hours a day that I used for the month of June in 2013. That's easy for me to find out when I've got this here. So I've got 
650 kilowatt hours. So I hit the equals sign, equals 650 divided by 29 days. Because there were 29 days that, that this was um, recorded. So there's 22 kilowatt hours per day. And that's just one simple example of how a spreadsheet can um, can be used and we'll see a little bit more of that in a minute okay so now what I'm gonna do to save time is to show you a completed um, spreadsheet or a semi completed spreadsheet and we're gonna do some of the work together to fill that out so that you can do this yourself okay so first of all, let me put in the name that I wrote here just to be consistent. Energy bills for Wes's house. Okay, notice a couple of other things up here. First of all, over here, and I'll post this spreadsheet so that you can look at it. But over here we have the square footage of my house, which happens to be 2,184 square feet. Uh, and I happen to put in, and I'll show you a better chart of this, the electrical, the BTUs per, this is wrong, this should be the BTU per kilowatt hour. We're going to measure up ultimately all of our energy consumption, and we're going to convert it from electricity kilowatt hours, and in my case, cordwood and pellets and propane we're going to convert it all to BTUs so we're going to look at the number of BTUs we use for different fuel sources then we're going to combine it all together and then we're going to look at that as a measure of BTUs per square foot which is also called the energy use index and this way we have a way of measuring apples to apples so I can look at my house and look at the BTUs per square foot and you can look at your house and do the same and we can compare am I higher or lower you know, we could compare lots of other things too, but it's basically like getting on that scale and measuring. Okay, so here are my uh, costs for actually one year, my electrical energy consumption. And I put in over here, just as we did previously, here is the average kilowatt hours a day then over here I looked at I use this number 3412 same number here and the square footage and down here are my totals for electricity 365 days I used a total of 9018 kilowatt hours it cost me one thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars and ninety six cents and then I took an average and I used an average my family used an average of 25 kilowatt hours per day okay so now what I did was here's that number again three thousand four hundred and twelve and what I did was, let me erase this and redo it, so I, um, uh, I took uh, here 9,018, so in this number where I want total BTUs, there's 3,412 BTUs per kilowatt hour. So I used... 9,018 kilowatt hours, so equals C17 and times 3,412 BTUs per kilowatt hour. Now 
Now, just looking at electricity, if my house is um, 2,184 square feet, let's get rid of this right here. Here's that number up here. 2,184 square feet, and I used a total of 3,769,416 BTUs last year. I can divide that out, which is what I've done up here, up here equals G17, G17 times H. 13. I'm sorry, divided by H13. And you can always see what you're doing up here in this little box up here. Okay? That's the description of the formula. Anytime you want to put a formula in Excel, you start it with an equal sign. Anytime you want to use a number that you're going to calculate with, you start it with an equal sign. When you want to write something, like here's a label called square footage, you just type it in. And then if I want to change it, because I don't like that that equal sign is right up there, too close, I need a space in there, I come in here and I just hit the space bar and that changes it. So, coming down here, once again, here's the EUI BTUs per square foot. Okay, so I've got BTUs, where's my total BTUs? One more time. That is total of, here's my total BTUs. So I'm going to go equals total BTUs divided by the forward slash key divided by 2184 so my energy hogging family just rounding it to zero, uses about 14,000 BTUs per square foot. Okay? Not okay? Whatever. Anyway, moving right along here, I am a multi-fuel using house, or I own a multi-fuel using house. So this is my electricity. My electricity is for lights, refrigerators, pumps, etc., etc. I also have one strip of electric heat in a sunroom, which I barely ever use. So basically, I know that what we've been looking at here is not my heating. And my, um, uh, my cooking is with propane, so I know it's not my cooking either. In some cases these things may be combined. So now we come down here and the next thing I have is I have backup fuel of oil and I used to use a lot of oil but I am trying to get off of it and you can see that I had one delivery last year 365 days this used me. I used 63 gallons of oil. I used to use like six or eight hundred. You'll see why in a moment. And the cost was $233.73. Okay, there happens to be 138,000 BTUs in a gallon of heating oil. So if I multiply 138,000 per gallon times 63 gallon, I come up with the total BTUs of 8,694,000 BTUs. 
this is from oil and I really should write in here oil O I L excellent I didn't know why it's in red but that's okay too okay so now we're coming down here and we'll do the same propane I cook uh, with propane and you can see I used a whopping 36 gallons last year and let's just come up here and I made a chart for you if you look all the way over on the right hand side here this is the energy source and this is the BTU and um, oops So I just aligned that to the center there. So electricity, 3,412 BTUs per kilowatt hour. Gas, there's 100,000 uh, BTUs per therm. Number two oil, fuel oil, heating oil, is uh, 138,000 per gallon. Uh, propane, which is what we're working on down here, is 91,690. So I'll just copy that by highlighting it and going control C and then down here to propane I'm going to put in uh, the number which is 91.6 so down here total BTUs BTU from propane and I am going to format one more time, wrap the text, BTUs from propane, okay, so now we'll put that in over here, um, actually I'm going to move that, let's move this over here. So this would be um, equals 36 gallons times 9160 <coughs> BTUs per gallon. Okay, now the next one here, so let's put propane in here. Over here, this next one here for, this is pellets, P-E-L-L-E-T-S. I have a pellet stove, and that's how I do the bulk of my heating now. And so, let's just come back up here and look at this again. But a, a ton of pellets is 149,000, I'm just going to copy that, I'm sorry, 1.49 million BTUs. So, come down here, I'm going to put that in here. Oh, you can always undo what you want if you get it in the wrong place. I'm going to put it here, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do the same thing. Equals 4 tons the star above the 8 is the times, by the way, times 1.49 million. And there's my BTUs from pellets. Now, the next one is a bit of a crapshoot because the question really is, um, what kind of cordwood do you have? Lots of us heat with cordwood here. And so now... I just averaged this out at 22 million um, BTUs per cord. Now I use, in my house, I use yet another source of heat for wood. I use cord wood. I've got a wood stove in the basement. I used to use wood a lot when I first moved here. Then we raised our roof, made a one-story house into a two-story house. and. Um, when we did that, the wood stove wasn't good enough to heat the whole house, so we put oil in, 
many years we heated with oil, but what with everything, we tried to get off of oil, bought a pellet stove. Now I use the pellet stove for the bulk of my heating, but when it's really cold out, if I use the wood stove and the pellet stove, my house stays very warm, and I still don't use any fossil fuels, and I like to be warm. So last year I only used a cord, a half a cord, that's 0.5, of hard, hardwood, and I uh, found that this is 22 million. So there, that's the number of BTUs per half cord or the amount that I used last year. So now I'm going to save this. Always save your work. So I'm going to save this file, save as, and I have it residential bills EUI. So I'm going to save that. It asks, I've already saved it. Yes. Thank you for watching. Welcome to part two of collecting your energy bills and uh, putting them on a spreadsheet and analyzing them. So far what we've done is we have put, our, you've seen me put my energy bills onto a spreadsheet. Hopefully you've done the same. You've got to um, do it by month if you have uh, a monthly bill, like I did with my electricity. If you have a gas bill or a uh, uh, something like that, or an oil bill where you get uh, deliveries more than once, you put those in by the month or by the time period accordingly. And then you add up the totals using our BTU equivalent over here we could find the number of BTUs that we've used for each of our sources of energy we can also identify what those sources of energy do for us in other words some of mine are used for heating some are used for powering electric appliances and pumps and lights and stuff like that and some are used for cooking and heating hot water. Okay, and we can apportion them. I've only done two things different on this spreadsheet from what we did in the first part. The first thing is I changed this right here to, a, it said per square foot, which was a mistake. So I changed it to electricity BTUs per kilowatt hour. So that's a measure of how many BTUs we have in one kilowatt hour which is 3412 then the other thing that I did differently from the first part was that you'll see I put these numbers here in bold because those numbers are the number of kilo I'm sorry the number of BTUs that I consumed in my house from electricity, oil, propane, pellets, and mixed hardwoods. Now I happen to have a very unusual mix, but again to come back to what we were saying before, we can compare apples and apples. How much energy did it take you to run your house? This is how much it took me to run mine. So let's total that up. So we're going to go, uh, let's go right to, is this, oops, sorry about that. We'll start right, oops, you've gone too far. There's my electricity. So we're going to start, I'm just trying to get it so I can see it all. Here's my electricity. So down here I'm going to go equals this, that's my electric BTUs, plus this, that's my 
heating fuel BTUs plus this, that's my propane heating bills, plus this, that's my pellets, plus this, which is my hardwood. So there, this is total, total BTU for one year. And if you find it easier to read these numbers, and I certainly do, if you go to, by the way, to get here, I'm, I'm right-clicking on my mouse, and then I'm clicking on Format Cells, and then in this case, what I want to do is, here's my number. I'm clicking on Number, I'm clicking on Number, and use Thousand Comma Separator. I find when I'm using big numbers that that helps me. So over here I've got uh, hundreds, thousands, millions. So I've got 212,364,256 BTUs. And if I come back up here to my top, doesn't want to cooperate. Let's do it this way. We have 2,000, control C to copy, by the way, control V as in Victor to paste. So over here, I've got the total BTUs. I've got my house square footage. Again, I'm going to right click, format cells. Alignment, wrap text, okay, now it's wrapped. Now there we go, control V, where is it? Boing, boing. My memory is like on my computer getting like my own personal memory. Apparently it forgets, so let's go back and remind it. And there, control V. So now we have by miraculous spreadsheet abilities. We have the house square footage, 2,184, and we have the total BTUs. So if we take equals the total BTUs divided by the square feet Lo and behold, we have the energy use index, except once again, well, let's write this in, EUI, which is BTU per square foot. Okay, now let's just format this cell again. I want number, I want number, I want zero for the decimal places. Okay, we might as well do the same here. Right click, format cells, zero under number and number for the decimal place. Okay, so, and then we can just to be consistent, highlight this. We could even, since this is the, um, this is actually the prize, this is what we want, because this allows us to compare with other buildings, houses, whatever. We use an amazing 97,236 BTUs per square foot in my house just blows my mind how high that is okay that is what I'd like you to determine from your house once again you will have these spreadsheets available online to you 
and once again here are the sources now what happens if you have your own source of energy that I haven't covered here maybe you've got coal or who knows what you're going to have to go and Google search and Google search BTU equivalent also you know how to contact me okay good luck with this over and out